know you're nervous for the Rams, but you got to be a little enthusiastic after being there. Bro, that, that game atmosphere was ridiculous. Energy, electricity. That place was rocking anyone was there. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Super Bug fans were there, too. The Beat Bug. Tampa Tones. We are joined by Lee Goon tonight, uh, host of the Pat and Aaron Show of WDAE. Uh, Pat Donovan. And it sounds like Stunna is bumbling a little bit. Going to put him on mute for a second until that gets a little clear. But we're joined by Pat It looks Donovan. like Stunna is hanging out with Cheech and Chong in a car with the windows up or something over there. <laughs> it does look like we got a little No, bit my, my uh, camera's broke. Howdy ho, howdy hey, how the hell are you guys? We're back, we're back, we're back. Like nobody ever left, like we never left the building at all. Long time no talk since Saturday. We're the Bucketeers on behalf of the great Gene from Buck What You Heard, on behalf of the great JLo. Tampa Tones here, and we got a great show today, a lot to talk about. Actually, a lot of just football stuff in general to talk about, but we're going to be bringing you guys Bucks Talk. NFL talk, another football league on the horizon and so much more. We had a legendary show come to an end in the Tampa sports area today. Just so much stuff to talk about on today's podcast. We'll bring in the great Gene here as I see Gene's got his bear. We still got to figure out our official 2024 bear for the program, but I'm sure that'll come together shortly with the great Gene by our side. Gene, how are you doing today? Man, I am excited. Thank you, guys. I'm really glad to be on here with you, J-Lo and Tones. We missed you, bro. Uh, It looks like you got a tan a little bit, and uh, I like it, man. I like it. Let's go. You know, a lot of things are going on around the league, and and it just puts us a week closer to kickoff. So every week we can get to another podcast is another week. We don't have to wait for football. So I'm excited. Let's go. Yeah, and that's why we love bringing the program to everybody. A couple times a week, so it in the house. makes the off season go by. Huncho makes the off season go by quicker when you're able to podcast a little bit. Since you guys blurted and interrupted, we'll bring the man in, Hunch. Hunch, how the hell you doing, brother? You got a big welcoming there. Uh, how are you? Good guys, man. Everything good. Just had a work day, but you know I couldn't miss the show. I'm trying to get back on track. How y'all fellas doing? Great, man. It's great to be here. Another day, brother. Another day closer to football season as we got the great J.C. Allen from Sports Illustrated tuning in as always. I mean, J.C., you're awesome, brother. Sup, fellas. Sup, J.C. And the great Christopher Cole in the building as well saying yo. So we'll bounce it over to J.Lo. What up, J.Lo? How the hell you doing, brother? Uh, I can finally see you, man. I thought I was going to have to put a search warrant out for you soon because... uh, we haven't seen your face in a couple episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here, man. I'm ready to talk football, man. A lot, lots has been going on the last few days, and we're getting closer to the football season. Mm-hmm. Now we got the UFL, and we got baseball season coming up. Starts tomorrow. As Tempe joins us, what up, fellas? Finally caught this from the start. Let's get it. Fire the cannons. Want to buck what you heard. Great listeners tuning in now as well. And Jalo and Gene, you guys did a hell of a job, and filling in for a couple of episodes so i greatly appreciate that if you guys miss those those are on youtube apple spotify google podcast and so much more you guys could listen or tune in and watch a great gene and j-lo they were joined by Rhett in one episode from cannon fire pod so that was incredible we were also here on saturday talking about the new bucks coaching hire and so much more across the land we got a lot to get to today as i mentioned we got A fun game with Gene, as always, a hot seat challenge. Gene's going to be bringing some hot questions to the table around the football league. We got football starting this weekend. Some people may go football starting this weekend. Yes, we have football starting this weekend. We're going to get into that. The owners meeting in Orlando just came to an end. Jason Light actually on his way home, (laughs) crossing I-4 from Orlando to Tampa right now. So we'll see how that goes. That's going to be incredible. And then... We got a couple other things to get to as well. But, fellas, we'll start with the owners meeting. 
anybody notice anything there? We had Todd Bowles talk to the media. We had Huncho talk to the media. We had G, uh, you know, not Huncho. I'm kidding around. But we had Todd Bowles, Jason Light, and uh, Joel Glazer talk to the media there from Orlando and kind of give their thoughts on the offseason, this upcoming season, shaping up the rule changes. We have a lot of rule changes to get to as well. We'll get into those, some better, some worse. But, J-Lo, since you're Giggles McGee up there, we'll start with you, brother. Take us through what you thought about the owners meeting in Orlando. No surprise, Andy Reid still in a Hawaiian shirt. You know, that's always one of the burning questions. Will he be in his I Hawaiian think those shirt? those are his pajamas, to be honest, man. He's been like that since he's with the Eagles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, J-Lo, any uh, thoughts about the owners meetings in Orlando? I mean, you know, I mean, some of the rule changes, been a couple of rule changes. Um, I don't agree with the head tackle very much. You know, it's making more, uh, more, you know, more of the defensive players, you know, less chance of making plays. That's going to that's gonna be a difficult one. I did like what Jason Light and Topple said in their interviews about the team, brought up a couple of players' names, praising them. So it makes me think about the draft a little bit more, what's going to go on the first round after hearing what they – said about some of those edges we got on the team already. Yeah, Gene, what are your thoughts from the owners meeting? It's a couple quick days, uh, you know, fun times, it seems like, for all those gentlemen down there. Anything stand out to you uh, around Bucks Ball in Orlando? Well, um, I guess we're going to two-hand touch. And, um, <laughs> you know, basically that's kind of where the NFL is right now. Or maybe it's a handshake. If you can get to the quarterback and, you, you know, you handshake his hand and, or running back, you have to shake his hand or something because this is crazy. Um, I don't know how, with the speed of the game, as fast as these kids are, how can you get to a play and figure out how you're going to tackle somebody? This is this only benefits the offense. I think it's a I, I think it's a horrible rule. And uh, again, you you you're, you have to depend more on your offensive linemen. You have to depend on your running backs making you know making the right plays. I, I don't think that the defensive players should be punished, uh, you know, for this, because it, it, I don't know, it just doesn't add up to me. And I'd love to see one of these owners or the competition committee members act this out. So I heard somebody say this on Twitter, act out what a actual tackle is to be now that you can't do this anymore. So to me, uh, that was probably one of the more frustrating parts of it. And on the flip side, I like the new kickoff rule. Uh, I think that it's it's it makes the game competitive still, and you you risk a lot less injuries. I wish they would have taken from the XFL the uh, referees to where everything is transparent, and we could listen in on what's going on in the booth, what's going on with the uh, in New York, what's going on with the referees on the field. Uh, that's one of the things I don't. Uh, you know, I wish they would, you know, if they're going to do all this stuff with tackling and stuff, I wish they would address the referees and bring some credibility back to uh, the NFL is from a referee aspect. Yeah, and the hip drop tackle is terrible, in my opinion. It's really putting a damper on the game. This is football, guys. I mean, it's sad to see injuries. They do their best at preventing it, but this is what you sign up for. This is the game of the NFL. What up, the great J.C. Allen joining us from what? SI Bucks game day. We'll get his thoughts and bring him in here in a second. But this is the NFL. Fastballs and baseball are never going to get outlawed, and they're a big factor in that game. They're a big part of injuries in that game. But you don't see baseball going, hold on, let's, we can't throw fastballs anymore. There's just too many jaw fractures, this and that. You don't see basketball saying, hey, let's take out hard-nosed fouls by the rim, right? We're going to start suspending guys for that. You never see that being the case. And then hockey, you still have fighting going on in the NHL, which causes multiple of injuries over there. So it seems like football is kind of contradicting itself, too. They ban the tackling of hip drop for quote unquote safety reasons yet they're going to make these fellas play on Wednesday uh, they're going to make these guys play three games in just a 13 14 day span so the NFL is kind of all over their place with their quote unquote safety agenda but we do have the great JC who says he disagrees to an extent JC thanks for joining us brother you and the little one happy Wednesday and uh, yeah I want to hear your thoughts on the whole thing yeah, so I, you know, 
I get what people are saying about the hip drop tackle. How do we tackle now? What's going on with that? But I do believe um, – hold on one second. Come back to me. Yeah, we'll come back to the great JC. Is uh, You know, I think The Rock and Cody Rhodes are calling him, so he's got to take a <laughs> phone call right now. Huncho, what are your thoughts on this whole thing and uh, the hip drop tackle rule? Then we'll bounce back to JC quickly. Huncho, what's your thoughts? Uh, I just think they're trying to make it more offensive for the offense to uh, score more points. That's what it's looking like because people love offense and um, scoring points, making it more difficult for the defense. JC, uh, yeah, now that we have you back, uh, what are your thoughts on the whole thing? Thank you. Sorry, I'm at the, uh, I'm at the Walmart pickup line here. Uh, you're, meet, anyways, you're meeting up with uh, Ronnie and T-Chris at the Hollywood Casino? I, I wish I was at the Hard Rock. No, my wife ordered some fur, piece of furniture I got to put together. Uh, <laughs> happy wife, happy life, bro. That's what they right. say, but it's not true. No, so back to the hip drop tackle. I see what people are saying as far as, you know, oh, it's making the offense more efficient. But if you really look at the hip drop tackle and the injuries that have been sustained throughout the last couple of years, when I kind of – my first reaction was, oh, it's one step closer to black football, and I posted that the other day. But when I really kind of dove in and looked at what they were trying to get rid of, it makes a lot of sense. Um, it, it's not necessarily – Ta you know what is being made out to be i think when you look at the hip drop tackle what they're really trying to ban here are players who are who are grabbing the ball carrier and then dropping their weight on their ankles and legs mm. we've seen so mm. many torn acls achilles injuries breaks fractures uh from that type of style of tackle there's obviously it, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult in terms oh of when you're when you're trying if you're a defender trying to think how am I going to get this guy down, especially if it's a guy like Derrick Henry, um, but most teams around the league aren't aren't they're not teaching that way. We talked to Coach Bowles. I was lucky enough to be at the coaching meet uh, co uh, owners meeting and coaches meeting the other day. And he said we don't teach it that way. We've never taught it that way. It's not something that our guys are taught how to do. It's really a dangerous technique that some players are using. Um, and not, not that I think all coaches are teaching it. And sometimes it's just kind of in the moment, shit, I've got to bring this guy down. What am I going to do? But when you look at the technique, you shouldn't be dropping all of your body weight onto a player's legs or ankles in any circumstances, especially while you're both in, in movement and motion at such high speeds. I know it's a gladiator game. I know it's, uh, you know what you're set, setting up for, but again, you know, kind of tailoring towards the offense when we're losing quarterbacks when we're losing running backs wide receivers to these types of tackles on a yearly basis um when it's you know something that coaches around the league are saying we're not coaching this uh, we're not teaching these things and it's something that needs to get looked at and the only way to kind of get this out of the game is to ban it ban it from the game so um there's a there's a, a stance on the side that says we're getting rid of this. You can't touch the quarterback. You can't tackle now. You can't do – what are we supposed to do? But at the same time, when you when you look at what they're trying to do is to make the game safer and make the game um, – keep their stars in the game instead of having these freak injuries happen from this type of tackle technique that, that is being used, it makes a lot of sense. And it, and it brings a little more clarity um, to the situation. Again, you know – we're football fans. All of us here are fans, especially um, of the game from back when it was. I mean, I had Rodney Harrison. You guys had John Lynch, you know, two of the toughest hitting safeties that have ever played the game. Um, you know, you look at some of the, the physicality that was back in 2001. I know Tom Brady has talked about it over and over again about how, you know, the physicality is going away from football towards safety. And it's just another action that we're going to we're never going to get football like we did. It's never going to, it's going to continue to get a little softer every year as we, as we tend towards uh, preventing things like CTE. You look at training camp, the, all the guys are wearing warrior caps now that, that are on the long, the offense and defensive lines to protect the, you know, concussion protocol, et cetera. Um, it's another way to kind of keep players safe, keep the league flowing, keep the fantasy flowing, keep the, you know, the eyes on it with star players and to stop losing so many um, 
you know, the injury to this tackle technique. So I get both sides of it, but I, I kind of get what the league is saying. And I, I kind of, now that I've thought about it, digest it, watch the videos of what they're truly trying to ban, I kind of err on the side of the league. And, you know, especially after saying Coach Bull say, you know, yeah. it's something that we don't teach, something that should, shouldn't should be happening in, in the game of football as it is anyways. Yeah, I guess I got a little rebuttal to that, I guess. Um, not really rebuttal, but – just kind of a couple of things. First off, to me, one gray area greatly going to open the door. It's a judgment call, right? Just like all these NFL penalties are, this is going to be right up there with the worst of judgment calls. Um, going to cause a lot of problems, going to cause a lot of drama. I I really doubt this thing's going to be called fairly. We see holding get called on some plays. We see holding ignored on some plays. Boy, oh boy, I hate to see how bad the refs screwed this one up. And again, some refs are good. Some refs are bad. I hate to see uh, the refs try and judgment call this. And Gene, before you tap in quick, I just want to know where we're exactly heading because year by year, it seems like every three or four years, the strike zone shrinks a little for these defenders, right? And I do get it. But first, they were going to take out the head shots. That got accomplished. They were going to take out the leg shots. That got accomplished. They were going to take out lowering your helmet. That got accomplished. Now they're taking out the hip drop. That got accomplished. I get it. They all cause injuries of some sort. But again, we are kind of tiptoeing our way to tackle football because you're going to have such a narrow strike zone and hit zone. I get these are dangerous hits and penalties, and I get they're going to try and transform and change a game. But year after year, what's going to be the next target? You know, people thought it was going to stop at the headshots. Then people thought it was going to stop at the leg shots. Then people thought it was going to stop with the running backs lowering their helmet as a ball carrier. Now we kind of led to this hip drop thing. Where is it going to turn next? Gene, thoughts on all of that? Um, for me, uh, I look at the league as a whole, and actions speak louder than words. And JCA, thank you for clarifying everything. But the, the NFL has done a horrible, horrible job with protecting its players. Number one, having a game on a Thursday, and you just had a game on a Sunday. With the game as violent as it is, they've chosen to make more money versus player safety. Monday night games, I understand a Monday night game. It's a special game. It should be uh, just one team playing, two teams playing on a Monday night, but they've, they're have they trying to make more money off of it, and I understand that because the NFL is a business. But when you talk about protecting the shield, protecting your players – and you've gone away from one, you've gotten rid of one uh, preseason game and turned it into a regular season game. You're talking about going to 18 games. You're talking about going to Brazil. You're talking about going to all these places, and it takes longer for a body to recover uh, from some of these games. I just, I, I see the the NFL, the league is talking out of both sides of its neck. And JC, I know that you can't speak on this as credential media, but I can and to me, it's hypocrisy at its highest. And I believe that, you know, just based on what you describe, I understand. But at the same time, when it's a bang, bang play and you've got a cornerback that's going up against a uh, running back and, uh, you know, what what's he supposed to do? You know, it, it's just one of those things and that, you know, these kids have been taught this since Pop Warner, some of them. So it isn't something they picked up this t tackling technique you know, as a pro, you know, a lot of these guys have uh, kind of carried this with them. So, again, I, I just don't believe the NFL when they say it's about player safety for the most part. But that's just me. J-Lo, any rebuttal to that or anything to add? No, I mean, Gene pretty much put a perspective. You know, it's just right now they're caring about player safety, you know, with the tackling and all that stuff. At the end of the day, you know, I, I feel like we're getting softer when it comes to the tackling, and hopefully it doesn't get any worse than it already is. Oh, it will. I have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And, uh, JC, if we do have you, any thoughts to what we kind of said there? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I and I will speak on it. I don't care. I, I do think there's some hip hypocrisy to the NFL. I mean, look at where we're getting a Wednesday night game here uh coming up soon on christmas giving players two short week teams two short weeks um with a saturday game and then obviously the wednesday game um 
so I mean, I definitely get there's there's definitely some, um, you know, hypocrisy coming from the league. And as you mentioned too, the judgment call it, it's going to be tough. They're already having issues with judgment calls around the league as it is. So now to add another one onto that onto that play to the referees, and there's really no way to um, train for it if you're a referee. Um, you know, you're not going to have good guys out there imitating hip drop tackles uh, and for, trying, you know, potentially injuring players. But you know, at the same time, you know. We are a much softer nation than we were, and you know, if it, it's just things that that would it would be okay twenty years ago aren't okay now, and it's the way that the league is trending. There's less and less at kids going into football because of parental concerns of injuries and concussions and CTE and all these things that are coming out. So mm-hmm. the league is trying to make it safer. Um, for not only their players, but for future generations of players, and over that pipeline, continue, hoping that pipeline continues to come. Uh, I don't know. It's one of these things where it's it, it's ticky tacky, right? Yeah. You, you don't like it. No one likes it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I get it. I, you know, I'm not like, oh yes, good, finally they're gone from the game. And you've seen <laughs> many offensive players come out and say this is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and I even mentioned, you know, as you said, when the cornerback's trying to take down. You know, Derrick Henry, good luck. You know, what are you <laughs> supposed to do? Um, but at the same time, it's it's one of these things where um, the league is trying to do its best for their players in this aspect. The best, not just the best for their players, but the best for their appearance. And the league will always try to do what's best for their appearance. Um, and getting rid of this play um, can, ensures that cash flow continues to come in to the shield so it, it's one of these things where it's a little it's a little ticky tacky you love it you hate it you take it for what it's worth there's no point in bitching about it complaining about it because nothing we say or do is going to change it i do love the kickoff rule though I yeah me too right there with you and jc speaking about that as i know you're a busy guy you know you probably got the rock on line one you got rakishi on line two your bloodline is <laughs> your bloodline's getting a little backed up there it's i the could one. say and uh Hey, I tried to get you an autograph picture at Raw, but you know, uh, you were a busy guy in Orlando. Who was there? I didn't even see who they have. I didn't even notice. Yeah, yeah, you must have blocked my number or something. It's all good. <laughs> no, it, it's not I mean, like not... you were in, not like you were in Orlando for the owners' meetings or anything <laughs> like that. But um, it was CM Punk for twenty five dollars. It, it was a cheapie. You didn't call me, dude. What the hell? Well, you know, JC. I know What's JC the... likes to collect $25? these things. I've got him a couple before, you know, CM Punk 25. But, JC, I know we you're got the busy. CM Punk, we got the CM Punk at Rumble, so I, I'm glad I didn't miss out on it. I, I don't know mm-hmm. how, I, how I missed that text. My bad. No, it's all good. You were probably talking to some more importance. Speaking of importance, how is Orlando? Kind of give us a lowdown there, the rundown there. Any important things to talk about? How is your experience and uh, news surrounding the Bucks at all? Orlando is wild, man. I've never done that before. Last, two, last year was in Arizona. Two years ago, it was in uh, um, Palm Beach, so I didn't make that trip. I only went for the coaches' meetings. Um, I unfortunately couldn't sneak away for the, the reception the night before. But, you know, you're just in this ballroom at the hotel, and there's 16 tables set up, each of them with a head coach at it, and just gaggles the reporters around there asking questions. I was talking Todd Bowles for a few, you know, listen to him for a few, went over and talked to our buddy, just got some good quote, talked to Dan Campbell, um, got to meet some of the, the best insiders in the game and Rossini and Schefter and, um, you know, Rappaport, got to meet them, mm. uh, had the, you know, then Jason Light spoke. It, it was, it was kind of wild. I'm not going to lie, uh, but there's a lot of good stuff to take away. I mean, we talked to, to Todd for 30 minutes and he, you know, he talked about the new corners he talked about, um, you know, their fit on the roster. He talked about the guys that they added in free agency, uh, some of the other guys they added in the free agency, uh, some of the guys that they added on to the team, um, you know, Jordan Whitehead and the guys they brought back and the guys that are ascending to step into a new role. One thing that he talked about, KJ Britt, I thought was pretty um, mm. was pretty interesting. You know, he talked about, you know, everyone talked about. Was that about a shot at Devin White, you think, at all? 
a little bit, a little bit, talking about his lack of speed, um, you know, but he's, I forget the exact quote, but I'll paraphrase. You know, he may not have that 40 time, but he's got the, the instincts and the wherewithal to be in the right position, you know, and, you know, some guys with a 40 time, you know, they don't have that kind of, this is a little sideways shot. Um, I, I think Jason Light also took a little sideways shot at um, Carlton Davis. You know, he's a great player for us when he was on the field. Um, but it was uh, it was an experience that I'm definitely looking forward to to, to doing again. Um, and man, that Ritz Carlton was was that's a swaggy hotel. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, the Ritz. I'll actually. Well, you know, I got I know someone who works at the Ritz in Santa Barbara, so I'll be uh, staying at the Ritz in the near future. Looking forward to that. You know, the Ritz is always nice. Marriott brand hotel. Cleveland me says it's Baker where Mayfield. fashion sits. You know. It is, man. I mean, it really is. And the Marriott's been taking the world by storm, gobbling up all these hotel identities. So kudos to them. Uh, you know, you got any hotel from the Red Roof Inn to the Ritz Carlton, damn near owned by the Marriott. Cleveland Me says Baker Mayfield needs to finish his story. JC, what do you think the Bucks could do? And then we'll get the Bucketeers chiming in as well. What could the Bucks try and do the remainder of this offseason to try and help, quote unquote, Baker Mayfield finish his story? Yeah, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll answer this and then I gotta run. Besides here, but, dyeing uh, his hair blonde and wearing a speedo, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think um, I think there's a few moves they can make. Uh, I was sad to see Josh Re- uh, Reynolds get snatched up by the Broncos. I thought he would have been a perfect number three, number four. But I think you're kind of turning your eyes now towards the draft. And I think the lack of movement um, at some of these positions that they have needs of, right? They took they took care of, you know, some depth along the offensive line. Guys who can compete with a Hainsey, um, with each other for that guard spot. And I think a potential rookie will definitely be there. Um, you know, cornerback, they built up that depth. You, you heard Jason say um, back at the combine, one of the things that really stuck out to him that 2020 – uh, season was the depth. So now at really two important positions, offensive line and corner, they have good solid depth um, there with guys who can come in, start potentially uh, if need to, and, and definitely push the guys in front of them. So um, on the offensive side of the ball to help him, they've got to get some interior offensive line help. I think by the way of the draft, you're looking, whether that be a first round target and a Graham Barton or a JPJ. I, I don't think we see that happen. I tend more to believe that they're gonna they're gonna do what Jason Light does, right? He's got a propensity for finding guys in the second, third round that he can draft, and that he can be um, that can be guys who can come in and start right away. My son plays guard, but he's not eligible till thir- 2037, so <laughs> they can't get him anytime soon. Um, but at wide receiver, you know, in a deep draft, they've got to find a wide receiver. Somewhere there, I, I think since they're not going to get one of these veterans out in the market, and the, it's kind of sparse right now. I mean, there's some guys who can play, but, um, you know, in a deep draft, I think you grab a guy. They had Malachi Cor- Corley out of Western Kentucky in for a visit. Same thing with Keon Coleman from Florida State. So they are looking at some of these wide receivers. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if they even took one in round in round one if their guys are off, um, off the board. Tight end, running back, mm-hmm. two spots. There's nothing left if you want a veteran tight end. So uh, with that market dried up, I, I think they'll probably look to the draft at tight end. I wouldn't say any anytime before day three, uh, maybe four, fifth round area uh, is where they'll probably look to grab one of those guys. I know Ben Sinat from Kansas State has been a guy who's been uh, really kind of mocked heavily to the box. Tanner McLaughlin out of Arizona as well. Um, running back, you guys know my favorite, Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. Love I love that kid. That. Love to have him in there. He's that power between the between the tackles type of guy. The, you know, the guy the Bucks have missed on third and short and red zone situation for the last couple of years. Um, but I mean, that's what they need. They need an interior offensive lineman to compete with these these veterans, uh, preferably at guard. I think they're fine with rolling out with with Hainsey and Breedison for a year. Uh, both of them have plenty of starts at center. Uh, may the best man win, and you know you've got a good reserve in, in tow. Um, and, but, you know, I think guard, wide receiver, tight end, running back, I wouldn't be surprised to see them address all four of those positions in this draft to help them out. On the defensive side, because the defense helps just as much 
um, as the offense by getting the ball back. They need a number one edge rusher. We've talked about that ad nauseum. Uh, Latu's starting to fall a little bit. As you see in certain mocks, maybe they can grab him. Um, you know, Jared Verse sniffs anywhere near the 20s. I think you got to pick up that phone, offer up that extra third. Maybe try to get a fifth round back, pick back to, to bridge that gap from your fourth to your sixth uh, comp pick. Um, and, and, you know, cornerback is certainly a need. Safety depth is certainly a need. Uh, defensive line depth is certainly a need. Linebacker is certainly a need. So there's plenty of places they can go in this draft on defense, almost at every position. But I think edge rushers, obviously, the number one, because they, you know, cause those sacks, cause those turnovers to get the offense the ball back. And that would help Baker Mayfield finish his story with more attempts with the ball in his hand. Yeah, and that's very true, JC. And before you get out of here, before you get to, uh, you know, prepping your son's draft stock for 13 years from now, and he will be a future buck, hopefully one day, maybe. But, uh, you yeah, know, just give us a last little thought of uh, your work you're doing. And, uh, you know, it's draft season, so I'm sure people hey, are uh, going to be... Just, just real quick, uh, JC, I want to thank you for everything that you've done. I remember when you first started out and you were commenting on, on podcasts. Bucks Report. Yep, and you've gone from there to where you are now, man, just leaps and bounds. So shout out to you, props to you for everything you've done. And, um, you know, I still haven't been on your show, but, you know, that, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> you're, you're, you're in the rotation. Don't worry. I'm coming up to the next. I got to get some I gotta, I gotta get some of the draft ex- experts coming on, and then I've got you lined up. Yeah, because um, you know I'm not a draft expert. That's for sure. <laughs> well, wait, draft beer or NFL draft? I've got I've got Sikama coming on. I've got John Vogel. I've got Dane Brugler. So we're in draft season. So I'm switching my gears over to there. Um, so, but I appreciate you, Gene. I appreciate everyone who's watched me from the beginning. I know Christopher Cole has been one of the OGs um, that's watched me rise from mm-hmm. Buff Support to where I am now. I'm just a middle aged man living his dream, you know. Um, but in regards to uh, what's going on, so everyone knows about the whole Sports Illustrated catastrophe. Um, they've been picked up by Minute um, Minutemen Media. So we're on our way to making a transformation from uh, where we were at uh, Arena Group over there. So we're going to get back up and running. Our site's been, we've been posting on Athlon. So technically I'm an Athlon employee right now, uh, but we're making that switch over. So I'm going to have a bunch more stuff. I've been kind of dormant because you can't find our links to our, our articles anywhere. <laughs> But I've got tons of stuff coming out, free agent grades, what the Bucks could do next, another mock draft coming up, um, roster reset, all that stuff. Pirate parlays in full swing. So I've got that going on too. Um, you know, you guys know my Twitter's your one stop shop for all things Bucks. So check that stuff out. And, you know, my DMs are always open if you ever want to shoot the shit, have a question, have any questions you want to ask, anything like that. Cannon, you got any last words for the group? Goodbye. <laughs> and I just want to—I want to personally Go say bucks. to Can, Go continue, bucks! continue killing it, buddy. Uh, you know we've been watching That's you and keeping up with your football journey from afar. So continue killing it. Best of luck throughout your uh, football journey, and uh, it's just getting started, buddy. And uh, we look forward to seeing where it goes this season. Thanks, JC and family, and you guys have a great Wednesday night, brother. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Uh, that was like the Dudley boys joining us right there. You know, the Allen guys. That was awesome, guys. And that's why JC is one of the best in the business from the world of, well, I don't know what the hell you call it anymore. It used to be Sports Illustrated, but now we're uh, Minute Men, we'll go with for now. But, uh, guys, that was fun stuff. Huncho, always a good time with JC. And before we get your thoughts, Hunch, I just want to say, I remember years ago, you know, I did – time skew a while back time skew podcast before i did the bucketeers and i remember seeing jc allen on friday nights when i was starting up the bucketeers on the audible with joshua cole allen and really fun stuff there and now following his journey all the way to where he is huncho he's always been a friend of ours and friend of the shows and um pops chimes in saying he's been a subscriber of sports illustrated since 1976 you know hey Buccaneers inaugural right around there as well. So uh, awesome stuff there. Huncho, any thoughts for the OG. great safety? Hunch? Oh, uh, yeah, he always comes in and give great content and great insight to uh, what he's doing and stuff like that. I just, I'm just i just thankful that he could come in and chime in. And, uh, I'm glad that he gave us another way to look at the uh, hip tackle drop, you know, 
because I seen that they were doing a swivel, something about a swivel. They were taking a swivel away or whatever. And um, I'm with you tones with the whole thing about the referees and being more consistent with it. I think that's going to be the the big issue. Uh oh! It looks like we may have lost a hunch. To differentiate. Oh, we got him back. Maybe he's in. Maybe he's out. We'll see if we could get him back a little bit. But Gene, uh, kind of going off what Huncho said right there. Um, yeah, just J.C. Allen's a great guy and a legend, and uh, the hip drop tackle should be an interesting form of judgment. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I go back to it. I I don't have any faith, zero faith in the referees. Period. End of story. Uh, and and I know I sound like a conspiracy theorist, but once uh, once sports betting was allowed into the NFL and it's as prevalent as it is now, uh, just seeing what the potential could be with uh, the NBA and what they had to deal with a rogue referee, allegedly a rogue. I think there's more, but I'm not going to get on. I'm not going to get on that soapbox. The refs have been horrible and they haven't been held accountable. Go on. Sorry, I think no, having difficulty. They, they haven't publicly been held accountable at all. And I, I'm struggling with that because you know they're they say, Oh, we we do this, and you're gonna get fined if you if you question a referee. No, there needs to be that healthy conversation out there so that they can get called out. And you know, we let's hey, let's have a good game, let's have a, a clean game. The refs, I shouldn't know a ref's name. There is no way in hell. I should know a ref's name based on the, the games that they've been involved in and the problems that they've caused uh, throughout the games. I should never, I, I don't care what a ref's name is, but you have to care because these different referee groups come in and for the Bucks, there are certain referee groups that will call everything on the Bucks. Then there are other ones that are more balanced when it comes to the Bucks. So to me, I, I just, you know, when you talk about the refs, you can't trust them. You don't know what they're going to do. Mm -mm. And I don't care what anybody says. I, I'm the, you know, the fix is in. If they want it, if they want to lean towards one team. That's what they're going to do. And there's nothing we could do about it. Yeah, not at all. And ha happy right, before we bring you in, Hunch, I do want to wish a happy birthday to G Vegas. G, G Vegas. Vegas tuning in. And it, it's a great birthday for G Vegas. It looks like Hunch, we'll get your words and JLo. I want to get your words. Good friend of the shows. Big Bob Robert chimes in with some draft prospects. And uh, J-Lo, we're going to get your thoughts on those draft prospects. But Huncho, uh, last thoughts as we wrap up the ref talk. Pops also chimed in saying they got to get full-time refs as the rules are getting so arbitrary, can ruin the game. Why are they the only sport that doesn't have full-time refs? That's a very good point, too. And as Gene and I and a lot of people have made the point, for as penny-pinching and money-making as the NFL likes to be, the fact that these refs are not full-time employees is a little bit baffling, in my opinion. It's suspicious. Hunt suspicious yeah. as hell. Suspicious. <laughs> Huncho, put a bow on it, brother. Yeah, it's very suspicious. And I, I feel like you guys, like, if he, he's leaning towards one way, and um, if it's not one of the team's favorite, then you'll see a lot of calls go the opposite way. And that's not fair for the game and for a team that's coming out the bottom trying to make a new name for itself, you know, because there's a lot of favorites going on in the league. And I don't think it's healthy, man. And, and if they're not studying the game as they need to be, like on a full full salary, then I don't think they're going to put their all attention to detail and, and, you know, know the rules by by hand and stuff like that, you know. But uh, it's interesting. it's going to be interesting to see how this whole thing plays out this year. And how many times I can throw my remote at the TV when they uh, make a bad call. <laughs> hey, maybe we'll start a GoFundMe for the NFL to try and get refs. Hey, we, hey how, much, how, many, how, many ref, how many remotes you broke? <laughs> <laughs> Either one too many or not enough. Uh, you know, I don't see the answer being in between. <laughs> J-Lo, uh, let's get your draft thoughts. We're going to transition here because we still got so much to get to. We still got Gene's hot seat challenge. We got UFL chatter. We got some great stuff coming up. If we got to ditch the GM salary cap game of the Bucks ring of honor for this week, we can surely do so. JLo thoughts on some great draft prospects from our friend, Bob. He said, uh, Ricky Purcell looks good. Lad McConkey and uh Hulker is a tight end. I know you're a Florida guy, J-Lo, so a little familiarity on at least one of those cats, but 
Out of that field, anyone catch your eye in the mid to late rounds? Rob is saying second or third round potentially. How do you see those guys draft stock shaking out, Jayla? If it's going to be Ricky Pearsall, it's going to have to be the second round. Because this kid can play. Like, I, you know, for as bad as my Gators have been the last couple of seasons, this man has lended up. He can, he can do a pop return. He can do a kick return. He can make one-handed catches. This man's going to go off the board in the second round, from what I've noticed. Um, McLaughlin, that's the Georgia receiver, right? The yep. Four. He's another guy, you know, who can make plays, good route runner. I think he's going to go early in the second round. Some people have him in the first, but I don't think so. I think he's going to be in the second round for sure. I wouldn't mind a Ricky Pierce Hall in the second round as a wide receiver three. I think he'll fit right in here, especially on the special teams, you know, with the new rules and all that. You know, he's got good vision. I think he's going to be a very good receiver wherever he goes, whether it's here or any other team. The tight end, I'm not too sure he brought up. I have to look into that more. But if you want to talk tight end, you know, of course, Brock Bowers won't be at our pick, and I would love to have that kid. That kid can ball. But um, he's, he's, He'll be a hot commodity. And Holker is from Colorado State, J-Lo. He had a pretty Colorado good season State. last year. Just an underrated player, you know, from, you know, a small college. Well, not small college, but, you know, but not a big-time campus. Not a power five. There you go. That's a better answer. That Jason Lane likes to go after. Jason Lane likes to go after those small school kids as far as, like, linemen or anywhere, really, if you ask me. But it wouldn't surprise me in the first round, like Gene mentioned, I think the last the last show we did, best player available will probably be our first pick in the first round because if you look at it, you got two off the linemen already balling it out we add, that we added. And then for what Jason Light brought up with Jose Ramirez and also um, Watts, something tells me that even if we don't get the edge we want, because obviously Latu Falls, he's got to be the pick, or JPJ. But I think the you heard Jason pick. Light talk up – or. Um... Todd Bowles, I'm sorry, talk up Marquis Swats as well. Okay. And, you know, they're kind of putting the emphasis on the edge position, JLo. So I do agree with you. Look out for edge rush, perhaps, whether it's, you know, in the draft, mid round, late round, because they're kind of still, not that Shaq had a great year last year, but they're missing that presence of a Shaq Barrett type, right? Like they'd like yeah. to build on that. So I totally agree with you, JLo. The draft is nearing closer and closer about a month from now and just to go over our draft schedule here briefly we always do our annual day three live draft special on that saturday of the nfl draft the bucketeers will come with you live from chicago jayla will be in town we're going to be breaking down about a couple hours worth of the draft, be bringing you the latest and greatest news, not just about the Bucks, but around the NFL draft, words of the draft, trades of the drafts, all that fun stuff. Then throughout the month of April, we're going to hit the ground running. We're going to have a ton of great guests. We're going to be doing our own Bucketeers 32-pick mock draft where we're going to have guests and fans of other teams, writers and contributors of other teams, maybe former players of other teams hopping on the podcast and making selections for maybe not only their team, but maybe their division as well. For example, if a Colts guy comes on, maybe he'll make the Titans and Colts picks if appropriate and so forth. As we just keep getting so many great comments tonight, so many great people in the chat. I did do a fair warning. We usually are all about the chat, but tonight we had so much to talk about. We're going to keep breezing through the chat. We're going to keep recognizing you guys, though, as we have been all night. It's a great Fabricio Almonitos tuned in on Facebook. Awesome stuff there. DD Rochelle, the rest of the gang. We just have a full house on Facebook. The great Kyle Husted, who does autograph signings with the Bucks, is on. Uh, Bob is joining us, of course. So just a great Facebook turnout there. Um, we talked briefly about some rule changes any last rule changes we want to bring up, fellas? A uh, couple other ones that we haven't gotten to yet. Postponed trade deadline instead of week eight now. The deadline will be week nine. So that gives Jason Light another week to cook, right? And remember, 
We did get Steve McClendon in the middle of the season a couple years back in the 2020 season. Big defense alignment from the Jets. He was with the Bucks 2020-2021. Helped us win a Super Bowl to prove that Jason Light does in-season moves. JC chimes in. Still Sports Illustrated, just a new partnership. Yeah, we're just messing, brother. We know that. We're just having a good time messing with you. Another rule change we talked about briefly was a kickoff rule change. That's getting changed around a little bit. Here as well, as we mentioned, doubleheader on Christmas. That's not necessarily a rule, but more of a formality in the middle of the week on a Wednesday now. We're going to go around the horn, starting with J-Lo, then go to Gene, then go to Huncho. J-Lo, let's put a bow on this rule stuff or uh, just NFL owners meet and stuff. Anything you want to brush up on that we might have not crossed paths with yet? There's another one. If you win the first challenge, you get another one. Instead of winning both of them, if we win the first challenge or one of your challenges, you get another one. And that could be that critical. Role, it, it could be very critical, especially when it comes to playoff time and all that stuff. So that's another one I've got to mention I do like. You know, if you win the challenge, you get another one, which could help win, a, you know, a very crucial football game. I always thought the two challenges was, like, don't get me wrong. I understand the premise and thought behind the two challenge or in a third challenge thing. But, man, so, you, you know, they're – a challenge could be so judgmental. Even after review, these refs still might not rule a catch a catch or vice versa. To me, it was a little bogus that you needed to hit home runs on both your first challenges to earn that third. Uh, thoughts quick, JLo, before we get to Gene. Are you with me there or you disagree? No, no, no I agree. Like I said, I I've, I just feel that the, the that change is was definitely clutch and no one's really talking about because you never know when some BS is going to happen and you're going to need that, that extra challenge in your pocket to back you up. Yes. Purcell is ranked 39th overall pops chimes in seeing a lot of bucks mock UCLA draft. That's what JC Allen was kind of saying. And uh, he actually just started following a couple bucks reporters on Instagram uh, Mr. Luta from UCLA, the edge rusher. So that's interesting to keep an eye on there. Gene, I know you're a man of many great words, my brother. Any Anything that we've missed on potentially, whether it's a rule or whether just kind of something that occurred this week at the owner's meeting? Well, Rule 15, Section 3, Article 3, to include a passer down by contact or out of bounds before throwing a pass is now a reviewable play. Mm. Uh, and, and I'm I'm glad they're doing this. I'm glad they're expanding this to what can be reviewed because I'm trying to think of the game last year, but there was a game where it was it was game changing that you couldn't review the play. And you know, again, the referees, I, I really think they really need to think about expanding reviews a whole lot more with the ineptness that we're seeing from these referees. So uh that's one of those one of those rules I'm I'm happy for. Uh, regardless of if it goes against us, uh, I think it's something that, you know, we need to really look at if the NFL's talk, always talking about protecting the shield, they need to add, to bring credibility back to the referees. And again, I have zero, I have zero respect for, you know, what they do, because again, you can't say anything about the referees They're They're protected by against the players and coaches. And when they make blatant calls that are wrong, they're disciplined in private and we, we don't know what's going on and I'm sorry, doesn't cut it for a team that lost a game because of the ineptness of a referee. Yeah. And Gene, to piggyback off your point, I believe you could also review delay of games now potentially yep. as well. And that's a big one, right? How many times do we see a play clock look like it's on double zeros and then say they let Mahomes get away with it. Right. And then next All the thing time. The next thing you know, it's a 25-yard freaking completion or a 30-yard touchdown fucking run, and it's like, you let that happen, and the clocks are on double zeros. We got to hold some people accountable there. So, Gene, that's a great one. Yeah. Hey, shout out to shout out to Krillin. My guy is he's on it. Uh, got to protect your McNuggets. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the longest yard, but um, yes. that was just <laughs> one of the greatest moves of all time. One of the greatest moves of all time. Honestly, man, Krillin is awesome, and thanks, he, Krillin. He's the, he is so awesome in the chat, man. You know, he's, he's got something to say. 
I'm not sure if it's a real Krillin from Dragon Ball Z or a, um, a different was. Krillin, but either way, just great stuff. And again, great stuff to all of our chatters, all of our listeners, all of our participators. Without you guys, this stuff ain't nearly half as fun. And it's just, that's just the way it is. If you guys have a podcast down the road, you'll know the feeling. It's a lot more fun when you get the chats, when you get the conversations, when you get to communicate with other Bucks fans and people. Just beautiful stuff. Huncho, J-Lo and Gene made great points about rules or the owners meeting week and stuff that got brought up. Any last words on your end about that? Any ideas, any thoughts, any actually, uh, rules that catch your eye? Actually, J-Lo took my, uh, what I was going to say about the, the uh, challenge. I had read a bit about that and I found that very interesting too, that you can um get another challenge and, if you get two, if you get one right, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and you, uh, elaborated, uh, you guys covered everything pretty much, you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> we can move on <laughs> at this point. Yeah, I agree. Hunch. And just briefly, I'm just going to bring up uh, something that I did mention, but not much detail. The trade deadline getting moved to week nine is huge. We see it in baseball, baseball expanded the playoffs. What do you see more of now? a ramped up trade deadline, right? Because you have more potential playoff teams, a lot more trades happening. I think you're going to start seeing the same in football. Now we added playoff teams a couple years back. Remember uh, we went from six teams in each conference to seven teams in each conference. That's a huge deal. That puts almost half the league at making the playoffs now. And if you delay that playoff or that trade deadline by one more week, it's going to make a lot of those borderline playoff teams give it the opportunity to go, hmm, should we maybe go all in this year? Should we maybe push the envelope this year? And I think you're going to see a lot more teams doing just that come week nine. Because week eight, you're still early on in the year. I know it only seems like one week difference isn't a lot, but it really is. And we've seen that with the 17th game getting added in. We've seen how much that plays a factor. You got teams missing the playoffs on tiebreakers by a game, by a half game with ties. This trade deadline is going to factor in greatly. Mark my words, 2024, you're going to see a trade happen during the new trade period that come in week, and they're going to be a big deal. Again, I keep bringing up Steve McClendon with the Bucks. He helped us get a Super Bowl. You're going to be seeing a week nine trade acquisition in 2024 make a big deal at the deadline. Speaking of big deal, speaking of deadline, we have football this weekend, fellas. I know we got March Madness. I know we got opening day baseball. I know we got the Ronnie and T crash show ending. We'll get into that briefly here as well. But we got UFL football, not XFL, not USFL, but the combo of the two, the UFL. And it's kind of cool because the first game is the XXFL champs taking on the X USFL champs. So that'll be a lot of fun. Saturday and Sunday, we do have games. We all got behind a team. I'm the D.C. Defenders guy. I got my teams back. We play Sunday, I believe. But in all honesty, fellas, we'll start with Huncho this time and work our way back around the other way. Are we looking forward to the UFL at all, Huncho? And do you think it'll help grow the game that we love of football? And uh, Huncho, if you could pay attention to one team, if you know of any of the teams, what are you looking forward to the most? Anthony Beck is coaching, former Bucks tight end, former Bucks Super Bowl champ. Barlow is yeah. coaching, former USF coach, South Florida coach. Skip Holtz is coaching. So a lot of Bucks ties around the league, or a lot of Tampa ties, I should uh-huh. say, Huncho. That's interesting that now that you said that, but um, I wasn't even a, really uh, quite aware of it. And usually how it is, I I catch like the first week of it, and then it, and then I kind of tail off from it. But I mean. Any football at this point is better than no football because I can't really get into the basketball like that. So I'm down for the uh to see what we gonna what uh in the, what the football world what's gonna happen and a lot of great players come for the from these leagues and stuff like that you know so I want to see what uh players that they can cre- uh get pushed to be better and come maybe join the NFL you know I'll be watching I'll stay tuned in. And, Hancho, that's a great point. What new stars or what new backups will this league provide? And people go, stars, what do you mean stars? We had an all-pro kicker from the Dallas Cowboys this past season coming from 
the USFL, uh, Brandon Aubrey. So, mm. yes, he was an all-pro. All pros could come from this. We've seen P.J. Walker come over. We've seen Bucks practice squad, and he was active for five games this year. Backup tight end David Wells come over. So that's a very interesting one. And for those wondering, hey, you guys are talking about this league a lot. Where can we watch it? This Saturday, 1 o'clock Eastern on Fox, the Stellions take on the Renegades. 4 o'clock Eastern, the Battle Hawks, Anthony Beck's team take on the Panthers. And then Sunday, noon Eastern on ESPN, my D.C. Defenders take on the Brahmas. And 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, the Memphis Showboats take on the Roughnecks. Gene. Beck a co- head coach or is he a coordinator? He's a head coach. He's a head coach, Hunch, and um, you know he's done a good job in St. Louis, and he's helped revitalize the football landscape after getting the Rams sucked out of their town. At least they got the Battle Hawks, who have proven to bring a little bit of joy to that area for football. So, <laughs> good stuff from former Buck tight end Anthony Beck right there. Yeah, I met him a few times. He's a good guy. He seems like an awesome guy. Uh, Gene, I know you're backing. Uh, you said the Roughnecks, I believe, or did you oh, change the, Bra- the Brahma Bulls? I'm sorry, the Brahmas. The, that's it. You're you're back in the Brahmas now. Yeah. Uh, what what are you looking forward to when the Brahmas take the field on Sunday? Um, I'm looking forward to their kicker destroying. Uh, I don't know if you know. I don't know if you guys have ever watched him. Um, anybody that right now that's listening to me, if you get a chance, it's D E E S T R O Y I N G. This guy is amazing for the culture. Uh, he does one-on-one cornerback versus wide receiver. Ten thousand dollars to the best D back. Ten or, or five thousand for the best D back. Five thousand for the best wide receiver. And they let him go one-on-one. And he's gone all over the country to do this. And now he's getting an opportunity to, to kick in the UFL. And I'm so excited for him. Um, because of the UC, the uh, NCAA and their stupid ass rules, uh, he was uh, kind of he was kicked out of college because he had a YouTube channel. Mm. And you don't have to believe me; you can look it up. It's it's out there. And he turned that in. He turned that into something amazing. And he's provided opportunities for some of these kids to get exposure that never would have gotten exposure. So I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for the Brahmas. I want to see him do it. I'd love to see him uh, in the NFL. And, uh, yeah, that's that's my thing right there, just what he's done, you know, for football, for the kids. And, you know, if, if Stunner was on here, he would back me up on that. And I, I think that's great, Gene. And let's remember the only way we could grow the game of football is by getting the youth out there, keeping the yeah. youth involved in the game. Because think about it. I know nobody wants to think about the future, but – We've seen so many legends come, and just yesterday, Mahomes was a kid, Lamar was a kid, Josh Allen was a kid, and now there's stars in front of our eyes, so who knows, Cannon Allen, JC's son, might be a star of tomorrow, you never know, and it's really important that Gene and Stunna do always bring that stuff up, so good stuff there, Gene, I'm going to look forward to watching his story now and see uh, what the Brahmas could do, and continue to grow the game there so that's really cool stuff um to learn about that's why i like these leagues too they bring these things to the forefront and you don't you know you don't really hear about it and you know what you don't have to have high expectations they are not and again i said this last week i said this the week before they are not competing against the nfl Mm -mm. anybody that's talking trash on this league you need to just be quiet and go somewhere else they're not competing with the nfl this Uh is spring football it's football, and we should enjoy it. And, right. again, I get irritated when people are like, oh, this is not the NFL. You know what? Go somewhere. And to Gene's point is our man Neil chimes in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As Neil always says, make sure if you're watching, whether it's on Buck What You Heard or Bucket Tears YouTube, hit the subscribe button, turn that notification bell on. So when Tone, Gene, Huncho, or J-Lo – Ever go live, you guys can be the first ones there. Hit the like and subscribe button. We truly appreciate it. But um, that that's such a great point, Gene. And we talk yeah. about it on last show as well on Saturday or maybe last week. I don't know. Everything's getting blended in now because it's been such fun talk. <laughs> but people can't mistake that the UFL is trying to compete with the NFL. That's not what's happening. They're being a spring football league. They're trying to keep your football juices going when football ends. 
and they're trying to act as a feeder league. I truly believe they're going to end up down the road being a very beneficial league for the NFL and vice versa. Um, it gives ex-NFL guys or guys looking to revamp their career a chance to continue playing and not cross the border into Canada. And uh, can't CFL's cool, don't get me wrong, but it's fun to have competition like the UFL. J-Lo, um, thoughts on the UFL? I know you're pulling for Anthony Becht, I know. Um, what are you looking forward to throughout this UFL season? Looking forward to Anthony Bett, man. I think he's a future coach in the making. I think he's got a good shot of making the NFL. Like Maybe a Mark Trussman the- route, you think going to coach elsewhere and yeah. then come over to the NFL? Agreed, yes. And then plus, don't forget, another former butt, Donnie Abraham, is a defensive coordinator. Man. Oh, come on, G. <laughs> he, he's the coordinator for the Battle Hawks, so that's another reason why I root for the Battle Ice Hawks. Man. The Iceman, Donnie Abraham. So that's another one I want to throw out there. But And also, I let AJ McCarron, I respect him. You know, he was on an NFL roster, and he has to be released so he can go play in the UFL for the Battle Hawks. So I'm hoping the best for him. I hope he's successful and wins a championship for the Battle Hawks. I like what, how he pretty much asked, you know, he pretty much asked the team, hey, release me. I want to go play in the spring, go play with my guys in the UFL. So I can respect that. He could just stay on the NFL roster, work with the pro team, you know, possibly being a star in the NFL, but he chose to go be with his brothers and be with his, you know, be with the teammates in St. Louis. So that's why I'm really looking forward to it. I like to think that AJ McCarron. And there looks like there's going to be about 10 game schedules, roughly the season spanning from March 30th through June 2nd. Playoffs probably will carry the season through June. MK says spicy McNuggets from McDonald's came back. Speaking of McDonald's quick, if anyone ever tried that new sauce, the McDonald's sauce, it ain't all that in a bag of chips. I'll just put it out there right now. I was hype about it. Um, A lot of bark, no bite for the McDonald's sauce. But that's my thing. I'll look into the scheduling because if you actually give this league a chance, it will take you through July, through the end of June, beginning of July. Next thing you know, you got the Hall of Fame game right around the corner. You got training camp ramping up. And, hey, I tell people this all the time. I know wrestling and football are different. But for people who hate on other wrestling promotions, don't be that guy. Go out there and give it a chance. Watch all the wrestling you can and enjoy. I'm going to say the same thing for football. Don't be that guy who sits on his computer and goes, if you're not in the NFL, I don't want to watch you. Who cares? I don't care if you're doing your taxes and you have these games on in the background. Just try and give it a shot. Try and support the brand and help grow the game of football. If you support the UFL, that'll eventually help out the NFL, believe it or not, and it'll continue to help grow the game of football, and that's what's most important to me. Continue. I just want to say this, Tom. This game we love most. What's up, Hunt? I just want to say this, uh, uh, referring to what Gene was saying about everybody's talking about the NFL and the players. You got to understand this. The league only could carry so many people uh, and so many Only 53 in the roster. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of people are not going to make it to the NFL. Does that mean they're not good players or do they not? Does that mean they're not good athletes? No. So it's going to be other areas that they're going to – other leagues that they can play in. And there's just as good – as guys on the rosters, you know what I'm saying? But they just didn't get an opportunity to play in the NFL. So, you know, all these other leagues, they can pick these guys up so they can perform and play over there and you get a better shot. You know what I'm saying? It's not just a whole bunch of knockoff guys that you just picked off Mm -hmm. at a Home Depot or somewhere. No, it's nowhere like that. These guys are are good competitors too. And they just need an opportunity to showcase their talent. And um, I'm definitely going to be tuning in to see what, uh, it brings this year, and I might be a little locked in more than I uh, used to. Uh, I'm used to doing. I um, miss NFL and football so bad, I'm going to damn near watch every game, probably. And, you know, the thing with that, J-Lo, which is great, is, yeah, you know, again, 
It's helping the game grow. Whether you're a former NFL player and that's your last resort to try and get back in the league, or you're a UDFA out of college trying to get your way into right. the league, it'll right. serve a purpose for both kinds. And when I, I'll mention him again, when I was with Time Skew back in the day, we did a lot of pre draft interviews and we asked the honest question to a lot of the kids because we try to target smaller school cats who maybe didn't have a great voice because this was during COVID as well. So we interviewed the Ben Danucci's of the world for the quarterbacks. He ended up going to the Cowboys. That was fun to see. We interviewed the we interviewed Bryce Huff of Memphis. Now he's a $15 million free agent. But, you know, we asked a lot of these kids, hey, would you mind playing in at that time the XFL? Uh, you know, Europe League, CFL, whatever it was, would you mind? And they go, no, not at all. That's professional football. We'd be honored to play the game of football at the next level. And that was just when it's the XFL, not just the XFL, but now it's a UFL. It's even a little more above and beyond, in my opinion, in terms of growing the game, which is incredible to see. Speaking of incredible to see, MK and Krillin are having a lot of fun right now. Uh, that's incredible to see. I love a good banter and good convo going on in the group chat. So that's fun stuff there. That's what I love about Gene and, uh, you know, just bringing a lot of good chatters, a lot of good people. And I want to mention what JC said earlier as well. Gene said it, I said it. I know we're all different people and we all cover the Bucks differently. We all have different pods, different platforms obviously jc having the grandest of them all being with sports illustrated but you kind of get familiar with people and jc allen pointed out hey christopher cole i noticed him way over here blah 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 you know i remember when i would appear on gene back in the day uh, on his show buck what you heard i remember recognizing donnie peppin's name or recognizing yeah. justice muhammad's name now seeing these guys cross over, it's just a real cool thing to see. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been doing Bucks Bucketeers. This July will be four or five years of the Bucketeers. I forget. You know, time flies by. But kind of just seeing these names rinse and repeat, whether it's on Gene's show, whether it's on JC's program, whether it's on the Bucketeers, that's what makes the 813 special. And even listening to WDAE, and this will transition us nicely, even before we get to the Gene Hot Seat Challenge and then our, you know, show goes on. But WDAE, you hear a lot of callers and a lot of listeners, and those are the same people you see on our pod or you see on Twitter as well. I see a lot of names, a lot of listeners, a lot of callers, a Bucks local sports radio appear on podcast and stuff as well. So really cool stuff. Tampa has a bond like no other. Speaking of WDAE, you see I'm wearing the Pat and Aaron show t-shirt right now i do like those guys a lot and i'm wearing it because we said goodbye today to one of the flagship shows of the wdae station for the past decade or not and i know a lot of people feel differently about radio guys and a lot of people might not like them a lot of people might love him but me personally i just want to show my gratitude and thanks to the ronnie and t crash show and ups and downs laughs cries chuckles the past decade without those Tampa Sports Radio would not have been the same. I remember, and, uh, you know, I probably started getting really, because I am a Chicago cat, so, you know, I, I'm a podcast guy as well, but about five, six years ago, I started getting more and more into Tampa Sports Radio. I'll never forget the morning after the Bucks won the Super Bowl. This was when Ronnie and T-Crest were on in the mornings. Ali Marpet called in at like 5 or 6 a.m. in the morning, in the wee hours of the morning, and, uh, you know, he was feeling good, but Ronnie and T-Crest had him on going back and forth with him, helping Tampa fans get content they wanted, content they needed that early. And, um, you know, Ronnie Knight Train Lane is a hell of a guy, really good person, and uh, looking forward to seeing him continue his career covering the Tampa Bay Rays and Buccaneers doing pre- and post-game show. And Tom Nicky kind of goes into his own adventure on the drive with T-Crest, but me personally, I just want to say thank you, Ronnie and T-Crafts, for bringing a lot of fun to Tampa Sports Radio. Whether I wanted to rip your guys' heads off or whether I agreed with you guys greatly, it's been an awesome decade to have you two around. Anyone else want to give their thoughts on that show coming to an end? J-Lo, any thoughts on the Ronnie and T-Crafts show ending after almost a decade? Shout out, man. 
it's not the easiest job when you got to deal with certain Bucks fans on their opinions and all that. And no, it's <laughs> just saying for 10 years, I mean, impressive. But thank you for, you know, providing, you know, the knowledge and how y'all feel between not only the Bucks, but the Raids as well. Think about it. Their show started right before the Winston era. So imagine yeah. all what they've gone through. The wow. two and 14 year pre Jameis, all the Jameis times, Bruce coming to town, the Super Bowl era, Brady retiring, Brady unretiring, Brady retiring. You know, they've gone through so much together and brought us so many great moments. Oh, it's hard. I mean, it, it's hard. It was hard being a Butts fan for the longest from 2008 to 2020. I mean, what what what's set, what's what's really you know hurtful to say? When the Bucks made the playoffs in 2020, I was ready to throw a damn party because like they had made the playoffs since I was in high school, and already I was like already 30 years old at the time when they finally made the playoffs again. But shout, but back to Ronnie and Tgrass, you know, thank you for what y'all did, provided the best content, answering people's questions, and just putting it out there, making sports great in Tampa Bay. Gene, Hancho, anyone got any words yeah. on Ronnie and T. Chris? Ronnie was he was gracious, gracious enough to come on Buck What You Heard back in was 2013, I think. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, really, he's a class act, and he's all he he actually followed me before I followed him on on Twitter. So uh, you know, we you know I would ask him questions and stuff like that. You know, in the chat, he is he's definitely a class act, and. As much as I badmouth WDAE, uh, him and Pat and Aaron, all class guys and, you know, all guys that have, you know, they've been very helpful. They've been very professional with me. And I, and I appreciate that knowing that I'm probably the most unprofessional guy on, on Twitter <laughs> or, you know, right borderline to that. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, that, that show and what that show has meant to so many viewers and, I wish, you know, I wish, you know, them both nothing but success. And it still kind of feels surreal. No, I know they'll both have their shows and they'll still be around and kudos to both of them. But it's still kind of surreal just knowing that, you know, next time they're on the waves, it'll be separate shows. But as Gene said, professionals, those four are professionals. We had Pat Donovan on the Bucketeers a couple years back, and we look forward to potentially having him maybe in the near future. You never know. But, um. You know, whether it's Ronnie Lane, Aaron Jacobson, Pat Donovan, some good professionals there. And again, remember, you might not agree with them 100% of the time, but just kind of appreciate what the, those guys do do a lot. And uh, it goes unnoticed a lot of the time. And Tampa Sports Radio hosts interact with our Twitter community more than I've ever seen. Chicago radio hosts don't do this stuff, guys. I know a lot of people don't pay attention to the Chicago bubble, understandably so, but. You know, I'm followed by the Pat and Aaron show, both of those guys, Chris Mathis, et cetera. We interact with each other. T. Chris interacts all the time with people. Ronnie does too. So you don't get this in other area, guys. Kind of appreciate that. Huncho, any last thoughts on uh, Ronnie and T. Chris or WDAE before we get to the Gene Hot Seat Challenge? I just wish them the best in, in the best in their endeavors. And if they're going to separate ways, I mean, 10 years, that's a long stretch to do anything like consistently. And if they lasted that long, I mean, they had to be great at what they do. And that was just on WDAE. They were also partners on some adventures before their time in WDAE. So kudos to them. I know it's going to be challenging and exciting for the each of them going their own ways as well. Speaking of challenging, it wouldn't be called the Gene Hot Seat Challenge if it wasn't fun and challenging. And I'm pretty sure JLo and I have both been on it, so I think it's time for Mr. Huncho to put his ass onto the hot seat. Get a Your little fire going. Your Ooh. turn, Hunch. So, so who's got the clock? I'm going to start the music, and I will start the clock here momentarily. Gene, if you want okay, to give me... Okay, I need to explain. I need to explain. It's going to know if you've seen it. There's, okay. no wrong, there's no wrong answer. you got to put that in your head right now. Well, you, whatever pops in your head, boom. you got to get it out there. And that's just pretty much how it works. So the questions will be NFL related. It okay. will be buy or sell. It will be contender or pretender. So you never know. We never know what you're going to get. Huh. Next, next, the next game will be a little bit harder. So this is the last of the easy game here. But um, go like ahead it. and get this started. All right. I like it. I like it. Let's go. Let's all right. Get this so, started. So, so 
After I ask the first question, the clock will start, okay? Let's go. Caleb Williams, buy or sell? It's on me. I, I yeah, just go start, start over, start over. Just, you, you've already got the... Okay, so you ready? Yeah. All right. Caleb Williams, buy or sell? Buy. With the new quarterback, the Steelers have contenders or pretenders? Pretenders. New York Jets with Aaron Rodgers back, contenders or pretenders? Pretender. Joe Burrow, comeback player of the year, buy or sell? I stopped the clock a minute. Hunch, do we have you? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Somebody call me. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Continue. Uh, Gene just re asked that okay. one, then I'll restart okay. it. Joe Burrow, comeback player of the year, buy or sell? Oh, we'll see if we get. I'll answer that one. Bye. All right. The Buffalo Bills comeback season next this year. Buy or sell? Sell. sell. Jadavian Clowney, game changer. Buy or sell? Sell. Sell. Matt Ryan as a Hall of Famer. Buy or sell? Sell. sell. Happy three twenty eight. By the way, my Washington huh. Generals win the NFC East. Buy or sell? Sell. Sell. Miami sell. Dolphins will win their division this year. Buy or sell? Sell. sell. Devin White, contender or pretender? Pretender. pretender. That's a minute. That's a minute. I'm sorry, man. Everybody wanted to call me as some for some odd reason. <laughs> no, you, you know what you did there, Huncho? You know what you did? You called Devin White before that segment, and you were like, yeah. man, you're going to get brought up right now. But – Every week, every weekday that we're on, not Saturdays, but when we're on during the week and you hear that rock and roll music, you know it's time for Gene and his Hot Seat Challenge. Gene, those are some good ones today. I was intrigued. I do have to say, I do have to say tomorrow is 328. Celebrate accordingly, <laughs> folks. Atlanta Falcons suck. <laughs> they can all kiss my ass. And 328 <laughs> is the day to do it, baby. I remember my brother, host of Cleve and me, Joey, you know, not the best gambler in the world, never has been, but a uh, really great guy. But, you know, he bets with his heart a lot over his brain. And, uh, you know, I, I always told him, and big Colts fan, so you can't really blame him for not liking Tom Brady too much. But one thing I always try to tell him, you can't bet against Tom Brady. And I remember that Super Bowl. What did he do? He bet against Tom Brady. And it was 28 to 3, and my brother had a little bit of fun, as we all do on the Super Bowl, right? And uh, let's just say he went to, uh, maybe not to bed, but he went to, uh, you know, Neverland, and it was 28 to 3, and he snapped back in reality the next morning, realizing what the hell happened the night before, and uh, Tom Brady took a toll on him yet again, and I think that was the last time he ever bet against Tom Brady. You know, you know what's so funny? I remember that Super Bowl and I was on Twitter and I was looking at my phone and everybody from Atlanta was just like they were piling because every you know Atlanta folks know I I don't like them. I don't like their city. I don't even like the word Atlanta. And <laughs> so when I was watching, I'm watching this game and everybody's just piling it on in the first half, man. They're like, Oh, you're trash. That's why the Bucks, that's why the Bucks are at home, blah, 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 blah. That's why we got Matt Ryan and y'all don't, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? Matt Ryan? Third, third Who? quarter. Third Who's quarter. It? Who's that Matt Ryan? Who? <laughs> and, and you know, you know, Matt Ryan retired today. He should have retired tomorrow. That would have been that would have been totally pissed, picturesque if he would have just retired, waited one more day and retire. I think he did that because he would have retired tomorrow. That would have been perfect because he's the he's the poster child for you know, the Atlanta Falcons and, you know, the way they folded the way they did. So again, you know, I, I know everybody hates the saints. I hate Atlanta as much as everybody else hates the saints and just, just putting it out there. Yeah. And let's not forget three twenty eight, three twenty eight, 328 and, um, Falcons. Google, Google three twenty eight and see what you get. Falcons were getting three that day and they lost by six. So unfortunately <laughs> for those guys, it was a bad day. Yeah. To be a I mean, gambler on the Falcons. 
I mean, can we all admit that we were happy that Landon didn't win a Super Bowl? Can we all admit yeah. that? I mean, hey, I, I'm one of those guys where no offense, if you know, if you're Atlanta, Carolina, or the Saints, I don't want to see you anywhere near the Lombardi. No. Thank you. And you could get uh, fucked if you disagree with the, No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, I see the, I, I see the other side of the pillow, too. Some people go, oh, I want the NFC South to be the best. You know, whatever. Sure. Yeah, good for yeah. you. But that ain't me. I don't. That ain't Gene. That ain't J-Lo. And that ain't Hancho. So, uh, you know, hey, 328. <laughs> but honestly, I don't. I don't have a problem with any of the other teams. If they lose, they lose. You know, I'll, I'll roast them or whatever. But I don't have that vitriol, that hatred, like other people do for the Saints. I, it's Atlanta. I mean, every time I see a picture of Roddy White's old big face ass, I just don't <laughs> like. I do not like it. Roddy White was a punk. He yeah. was. A, he was a bitch. I hated that guy. And I'm. I am so glad that Chick Fil A is closed on Sunday. And they have it in that stupid ass stadium. That makes me happy too. That's just how bad I do not like Atlanta. That's hilarious. Chick Fil A in their stadium, and uh, on Sundays they can't even use. Well, Falcons fans aren't used to watching real football on Sundays anyway. Yeah, they have so, that uh, noise piped in anyway. So you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Them- I was debating on going to Atlanta as a road game. I'm debating on going to that make little sure stadium. you <laughs> take a shower when you're going. <laughs> Wear a, wear a rubber in more areas than one when you go down there. <laughs> those, uh, those, ca- those, the white suits that they wear, the hazmat suits. Has, man, he really hates that. Atlanta. He really I do. He, do. he does. I don't even want to fly over fucking Atlanta. That's just how <laughs> much I do not like him. I'm dead serious. That's why Atlanta, the only way you could get there is via layover because no one wants to spend <laughs> their time there. So they force you to go there by getting a layover and, uh, our co-host Bucko the Bruce lives around there, so that's all that needs to tell you that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we love you, Bucko. We love you for sure. But um, no, I, I think it's great. And we got Ed Rabasa, John Ariola, Louis Montavo, Kenneth Rubright, and others joining us on Facebook. Man, it's been an incredible time. But no, I, I agree with Gene. You know, one of those things where hard to, you know, Atlanta. J-Lo, Stunna and I were going to go there a couple years back. We didn't quite make it, and um, I'm not mad about it. I'll just say that. If I were to go down there, I'd love to go for the Senior Bowl. Well, now it's a Junior and Senior Bowl, I guess, but um, I'm not really upset if I don't get to Atlanta anytime soon. See, it's different for me, too, because I'm a ro- when I go to Tampa, that's a vacay for me, so I'm not going to waste my time during the season. You know, me and the Pops, we'll go to one road game. Sure, we'll go to a cool spot. You know, we've been to Green Bay. We've been to... Uh, Cincinnati, we've been to Cleveland, we've been to Detroit, we've been to those types, but they're driving. I'm mm-hmm. not going to freaking fly. If I'm flying, I'm going to the 813, and that's that, damn it. You know, that is that. Speaking of Come that, being, what'd you say? You were a little Come muffly. On. Come on home, baby. That's it. Come home. Come home. <laughs> Come on. Let's go, baby. Like, and, and sorry, you were only muffly because I keep talking. I'm a jitterbox, man. I swear to God, some days I wake up and it's like, oh, man, I got a pod, you know. And then when you get on the pod, it's like, bing, bang, zoom. I'm ready for like five hours worth of talking. It's like the adrenaline really beefs up. And that's what I love about podcasting. And it makes it easier when you're with Gene, J-Lo, and Huncho because you never want to stop. Speaking of stop. Monty Kiffin never stopped, guys, and today he got some great news, and some great viewer commented on it. Sorry, I didn't bring it up more because we were going to get to it, so didn't really want to bring it up at the beginning of the show. But Monty Kiffin getting honored by the Hall of Fame, getting an award and getting a ceremony done on behalf of Canton, the Hall of Fame there. Gene, we'll start with you. Monty Kiffin, great legend to the 813, a hero to the 813, and let's, let's not forget the Bucks are on their path to the playoffs in his final year. The big guy announced that he was going to start following his son Lane, rightfully so, nothing yeah. against Monty. And that's kind of when the glue came apart for Tampa that year. And, you know, we went from, I believe, 9-3 and three to 9-7, and seven, missing the playoffs in part. So, Gene, he was a legend, and uh, the glue literally came undone as soon as he announced his departure. 
you know, uh, when I when I look at Tampa and I'm thinking of Tampa back in the in the 80s and the early 90s and and just how this team was where you went to play them because you love the team. You love the fact that there is an actual team, an NFL team in Tampa, Florida. And uh, I, I don't know how I can really describe that feeling, but it, it, you're still proud. You see the cream sickle and you you still you're proud to be a Bucks fan. I know a lot of Bucks fans turned into Niner fans or Dallas Cowboy fans. And I'm hey, you busters know who you are. I'm talking to y'all out there. <laughs> but but seriously, uh, just the ones that hung in there, the people that went to the games. And, you know, I remember in the 80s bringing your cooler and, you know, you know, my uncle and cousins, we all, we would all go to games and stuff, you know, over in West Tampa, we'd go to games, had a good time, fun. And uh, that's what I remember. And then you had Sam I am come in and Sam started drafting players and started started building um, Rich McKay. They they had some cook in there. And then you have uh, Tony Dungy come in. You have a Monty Kiffin that comes in there and he's able to work with all them defensive pieces and he puts together a masterpiece. And from there, if you, I mean, I remember the Niners and the Niners, everybody was scared of that Niners offense. So they ran into Monty Kiffin in that, in that Bucks defense. And they, they wasn't the same after Mm -hmm. that. Jerry Rice wasn't the same. Um, uh, You know, the, just players weren't the same after they faced that Bucks defense and the Bucks defense kept rolling. They kept rolling. They kept rolling. And then when it came time for the Super Bowl, they came out and they put on that encore performance. And, you know, you, you look at Monty Kiffin and, and the, and how he was, he was calling that defense and the players were playing to their strengths. And it was just incredible to watch. And um, I will always have a special place in my heart for Monty Kiffin just because of where we've been to where we got to. And, uh, you know, you know, I'm not comparing him with Todd Bowles, two totally separate entities, but uh, just seeing Todd Bowles and how he, he coached that defense. I mean, it, it just makes you proud and it makes you appreciate, you know, this was the guy that are, that started it all with the Tampa two, uh, Monty Kiffin. So yeah, I am so excited for him and I'm happy for him and his family. Yeah, Huncho, before we get your thoughts on JLo's couple news tidbits here, breaking news out of the NFL. The Chiefs are expected to sign rugby star Lewis Reese Zamet, who is expected to be an offensive weapon for Andy Reid used in various ways. So ties into us talking about the UFL, right? As Gene is nodding out there at the rugby comments, seemingly. But, uh, you know, the UFL. That goes to show maybe other leagues have a path. Here's a rugby star, and I'd sure as hell hope the UFL is better chance to NFL than rugby does. And the Lightning are winning one to nothing on Boston. But Huncho, oh, baby. any um, Monty Kiffin memories, thoughts, likes you want to share? Uh, yeah, I, I feel like when he bought the Tampa two and that great defense, man, he like Gene said, he put a lot of key pieces together and um. To me, that was one of the best defenses I didn't seen in a while. Like Tampa, that Tampa O two Tampa defense is 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 phenomenal. You got guys like John Lynch and and uh, Derek Brooks and Warren Sapp. Either you like them or hate them or whatever. Derek Brooks, you got uh, Shelton Quarles. You you had a, a Rondé Barber. Jack. You had a lot of guys on that defense that 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 I would say Hall of Famers or, or very definitely deserve to be in the ring of honor for the Bucks. And um, I just appreciate everything that he did while his time, while he was here in Tampa. And for him to keep going even after at that age and still win is phenomenal, man. And, um, yeah, I appreciate everything. And congratulations to him and his family. Yeah, J-Lo, thoughts on that? Thoughts on the Kiffin and the legacy behind him? As MH says, hopefully Lane gets a real chance at the Bucks one day. That would be interesting. I don't see it happening, but you never know. <laughs> Sorry, Gene, but um, Monty Kiffin, however, to me, the greatest defensive play call I've ever seen in my life is being a football fan. No disrespect to Todd Bowles, what he did for us in 2020. But for what Kiffin did in 2002, having one of the fastest defenses ever in football, 
and fans want to argue with Baltimore, Pittsburgh Steel Curtain, you want to argue, you tell me one thing. How many Hall of Famers were on that defense compared to the 0-2 Bucks defense that Kiffin coached? And then you come talk to me. By far, that was the greatest defense in the game of football. I'll give anybody to the day I die until that time comes. Because let me tell you, Kiffin was the guy. He got this team prepared. And like you said, in 07, when he announced he was leaving, the team fell apart. That's where that game, where we lost four straight games, is because Kiffin announced way too soon that he was leaving to go help his son in college. And that's how you can tell what kind of relation he had with these players between you know, Derek Brooks, Wande Barber, some of these other young cats that were on the team at the time. So, you know, Monty Kiffin, thank you for what you've done here in Tampa. Congratulations. Well deserved. And to me, you always go down as the best defensive play crawler in the game. You want to know what's hilarious and not hilarious is Monty's legacy. And I love that guy. And we're all very thankful what he's done here, but What's hilarious is people buying the hype of Mr. One Sack Every Three Games, Mr. Five Sacks a Year, Jadavian Clowney. He's oh always God. getting this buzz. He's always getting this hype because football fans that don't really know the game know he was the first pick of the draft, and they want to assume he's this hype beast, he's this great player. Break down his stats. This guy averages one sack every three games, pretty much, in his NFL career. He's averaged a lowly five and a half sacks a season in his NFL career. And he's had multiple seasons where he's registered zero sacks in his NFL career. Not once, but twice. He's registered zero sacks in his NFL career. And he's on his sixth team in 11 seasons in his NFL career. So here's a guy who's not serious about winning. Here's a guy who's not a productive player on the field. Here's a guy who's a lot of click and no hype, and yet Panthers fans are trying to act like this is a big-time signing. And Hunter, I I see you laughing. I, I agree. This is comical. 10 million a year is ridiculous for Jadavian Clowney. I think he's overhyped because in college he had that big hit and, you know, and that, right that that led his way into the NFL. It didn't transition as properly. I don't know if he had probably one or two good years. His name rang bell because what he did in college. and Last year was probably his best year, honestly. I was just going to say that. That, was probably, that probably was his best season last year. What? He was what? Almost nine and a half sets? Wow. It only took well. He's he is the defensive version of Odell Beckham Jr. in that one handed. Oh, yeah. Facts. Well said. Well said. Facts. Except honestly, OBJ's probably even been a little better. Not that he's been great, but you know hey, but when you think of they always show that play from twenty fifteen that he made with one hand, and right. that's that's the only that's the only highlight reel they really like get into that you're always gonna see. Right. I mean, Genevian Clowney, he's he's all ice and no whiskey, man. And and that's that's to me just what he is. And he's from and he's from the North Carolina area, so it makes yeah. sense why he went to Carolina. Dan Morgan, I'm sorry, but you're making bad decisions on money. And thank God you're not our general manager. Because let me tell you, you throw money away on two guards, and then you throw money at a Jadavian Clowney, who to to all of us, obviously. Didn't live up to the hype he once was the first overall pick in 2014. So to me, these are moves you make if you're steps away from the Super Bowl. Right. The Ravens made that clowny move last year, and it, it worked out for them because they had such a good defense. Yeah. Panthers are not going to be in that position. They're not going to be in a position where a $25 million a year offensive lineman, a guard. We're a $10 million a year overrated clowny. These are going to be looked at as the cuts of tomorrow. I guarantee you, within they, two seasons, some of these guys are signing today will be cut. Dude, and, and no. I'm, they're, I'm, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no. What I was going to say is, you, it reminds me of Devin White. Devin White has all these good players around him. Oh, and yeah. we saw what happened with Devin White when Levante David was out. 
he was lost. He he was he was lost. I don't care what anybody says. The guy was lost, and you could tell. Now you're he's going to Philly. Philly's depleted from where they were when they went to the Super Bowl. This is not the same Eagles team. So now they're putting a lot of dependency on on Devin White. Jadavian Clowney's in the same place. They got rid of they got rid of Burns. They're bringing in Clowney. They think Clowney's going to help them get some pressure on the quarterback. And Clowney's not that guy. Clowney's a role player. Clowney's the guy that works within a system. Clowney's not that guy that you build a team around. I agree with that, J-Lo. Keep piggybacking, and then we're going to get to um, our last segment before the final word. <laughs> no, like, seriously, to me, Dan Morgan is like a rookie of Jason Lyon 2014. The Bucs spent some money. They're bringing some of these big-time free agents. And that's where the Panthers are going to head. The fans get excited. Oh, we got you, Damian Clowney. Oh, my God. We got a <laughs> guy who went first overall who quit on the Browns. Quit. Quit on the Browns, okay, who to me is a very underrated defensive team. You quit on that team, and then you get a second chance with Baltimore that took you in, and you're going to go to Carolina as a savior? No. Have fun getting pancaked by Tristan Wurz if, you go, if you're brave enough to go on the left side, <laughs> big guy. He literally had two sacks. <clears throat> When he was on the field the same time as Miles Garrett. I could get eight sacks if I'm lined up across from Miles Garrett. That guy, you know, he he, he takes more uh-huh. traffic on than I-4 on a Saturday when USF and UCF are playing. So I, I don't want to hear this is a great signing by any means from the Carolina base or brass. Speaking of great signing, next show, time permitting, Saturday, We're going to put our GM caps on. We're going to be signing guys, and we're going to be bringing back the Bucks GM salary cap game. We've had a couple of uh, shows of this in the past. We've done an all-time defensive one. We've done an, um, you know, all-time Bucks one. We've done a free agent one with the incoming free agents. In the next show, we're going to be doing our own Bucketeers Ring of Honor. And we're going to be doing it via the GM salary cap game. And it's going to be a spinoff on the game. It's going to be a team build. We're all going to build our own Bucketeers Ring of Honor. And here's the catch. It's going to be with only people who are not in the Ring of Honor at this I given think. time. We're not going to have Bruce Arians. We're not going to have Mike Els- uh, You know, We're not going to have any of those cats. We're only going to be doing it with the snubbed of the snubbed, with the Simeon Rices, you know, with the Hardy Nickersons. We're even going to mention a guy who maybe got removed. Will his name be back? John Gruden, Tom Brady. You know, we have a lot of willpower for Bucks Ring of Honor mentioned. So we're going to have fun, do a team build, and then we're going to do something as well, just so simple as voting on who we personally believe should be the next member of the Bucks Ring of Honor. Gene okay. and I, you guys may have seen Gene tweet about it earlier and say we should talk about this. We sure as hell are because this is something that intrigues me. And if you guys saw my tweet yesterday, I was campaigning for Simeon Rice to be the next inductee into the Bucks Ring of Honor six years in Tampa, won the Super Bowl here, five of those six years, had incredible season. So, I think you guys might know my next choice, wink, wink, hint, hint, Simeon Rice. But we're going to be team building our Bucks Ring of Honor for, again, members that aren't in the ROH. And then we're going to be giving our opinion on who should be the 2024 Buccaneer Ring of Honor inductee if we do get one this year. Any words or thoughts on that before we get to our final words, fellas? Um. Nothing for me. Um, this has been an awesome show. I've been really, I've been actually looking forward to the to this show. So, um, thank you guys again. Thank you to everybody in the chat, um, especially G Vegas hanging out with us on his birthday. Who the hell else does that, man? Thank you so much, G Vegas, um, longtime listener. Justice Muhammad, another longtime listener. Thank you guys um, again. The listeners make this show, and you know, and I love that the fact that this show is fan centric these guys come in they feel comfortable they can say whatever they want to and i really believe we've got the most intelligent chat in the nfl 
I believe that as well. And, um, you know, I love all Bucks podcast, radio stations, coverage, all that fun stuff, a lot of great content everywhere. But when I sit down to do the Bucketeers, whether it's Gene, J-Lo, Huncho, we get these chats. We Even if I'm not here, man, I mean, J-Lo and Gene were killing it. We get such great contributions from the chat. We get great guests like Rhett, J.C. Allen, you know, just people, real people. And some people out there, you know, they might not try and have the likes of J.C. Allen or Rhett on their shows. They might not try and have guys like Gene and I. Hell, they might make you pay money just to have your comment shown on screen. And you know what? That's all right. Every show's different. And that's what makes us different. We love to chat with you guys. We love to talk with you guys. And I really feel honored to be celebrating a birthday with G Vegas. And uh, it, it really does make me feel some type of way. And uh, we appreciate it all here. And I've had a lot of fun. Um, you know, I've been a big fan of Buck What You Heard. Like I said, we used to call into Gene's show. We had a pod too. Gene's been on some of our original pods. I've been on a good amount of Gene's pod. So just to be able to sit down and chat with Gene, just to be able to become friends with a guy like J-Lo who's coming to Chicago for our draft special. The gross and experiences that this pod brings me, that's my final word. On a day where Tampa loses a great radio show, Ronnie and T-Crass, you could continue to remember why that's not a sad thing and why you should be embracing it because you got pods like the Bucketeers to continue to bring great conversations, and we just thank you guys so much. J-Lo, last word, final word. Shout out to the, you know, the fan that watched the show. Thank you for everybody that tuned in, leaving your comments. You know, you guys are the best. You know, we love Buccaneer football. We may not agree to everything. Believe me, we all four may not agree to everything, but we're Fuck a family. You. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're a family, okay? We love our team. We want the best for our team. So I just want to throw that out there. Thank you for tuning in. Uncle got- Punch. Oh no, we got we got steam and sound kicks. <laughs> we got Falco punches coming out of nowhere. Man, we better get out of here before someone gets arrested for ten to five in the streets with a Falco punch of an assault. No, no, but I want to end it with this. So you know, Gene, it's it's been a pleasure having you on the show, being part of the group. You know, I learned a lot of knowledge from you from watching from Buck What You Heard and from what you're teaching me, doing the pod with you. Tones, God bless you, bro. Thank you for the opportunity. And Hancho, you're the man, bro. Yep. Glad to have you on the show, man. I miss you, man. I am too. I'm, I'm glad to have him on as well, man. It's just, uh, it, it just kind of makes it all complete right there, getting this guy on here. And, yeah, well, my service ain't tripping, and everybody ain't calling me. Like, yeah, I love him. <laughs> and to be honest, I didn't miss Hunch that. No, I'm kidding. I fucking <laughs> I love Hunch, know. man. And it's Huncho and I have had some great times, and he's helped the show out tremendously when we were going through some co-host disappearances. And I just want to always thank Huncho for being a great guy and a great friend when I do visit the Tampa area. Me and him always seem to link up at least once, if not twice. Hell, maybe sometimes three times. But that's why I started this podcast not to try and put on my suit and tie and walk down the aisle with a sport coat and say, all right, NFL Network, here I am. No, it was to do this with my friends, be able to talk football with people I love. And Huncho, give us your final word and take her home. I'm going to say shout out to you, Tom's, because I've seen – I mean, not for the last few years, I didn't see people walk away and um, you stay firm in your position and you take it and you don't give up and you inspired a lot of people to, you know, continue to tune in and watch. And um, you still gathered everybody here. And um, I, I love the addition of, of Gene and J-Lo meeting J-Lo. And he started off watching the show and now he comes in with his great takes and knowledge. And I learned from him. Gene, phenomenal. I've been watching him from, from far for a while. And um. Just to have him on the show and to actually pick his brain and hear him. And I didn't know this dude was this funny. You understand what I'm saying? And um, it, it all fits. And you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just getting back in the, the flow of things. But, yeah, I, I love everybody. And um, I appreciate all you guys and the fans and the, and the chat, man, and bringing all these great people over with you, man. And just continue to do y'all, man, regardless. I see it. Bucket, bucketeers. Buck what you heard. Sky's the limits, man.
Yeah, Hunch, we love you. And you know what's funny real quick? And I always let the haters hate because whether it's been me or one of the six other Bucketeers, we're seven pack now, I've gotten message or tweets. Oh, why do you collab with them? Like, not anyone in particular, but I've gotten a message about every single co-host, including myself, right. including everybody. Hey, why do you talk with this person? Oh, this person that I do not give a fuck. That is why this is a Bucketeers yeah. And that's why we're here, and you're on the Twitter, um, thumbing why is this person here, this person there. So, kiss all, ki- kiss my the fattest part of my ass, and that's me putting it nicely. Pop. But Pop, Pops left us with a great. We're gonna end the show on this trivia question, and we hope whoever tunes into the next pod might have some answers or might be a prize. I know people could look it up, whatever. But in the history, the Bucks have had five number one overall picks in the draft next show the first person to name the five people who the bucks have taken number one overall in past year's drafts any listener who text in calls in whatever chats in with those five will win a prize on behalf of the bucketeers the five Number one overall picks. I know in Tampa one. Bay. I know one. I, 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 got, hey, I, got, don't get... I got three on top of my head right now. I'm not I know one it. off the. I know one off the rip, and he's a piece of shit. Saint X, uh, EQW. Yeah, uh, Cam Jordan, right? Yeah, he he probably folds his clothes. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> that, yeah, that, well, well, I think uh, Sean Payton. You no, know, Cam, Cam Jordan's the guy that he's upset that he didn't get to be a buck. Like, just to <laughs> clearly. Clearly, yeah. he he's gotta be upset. He's got to. He he hates. Him. And you know the Saints. We are in their head because that Jono Barnes kid or whoever the hell that is. I see him on Twitter sometimes. He had an irrelevant Saints player on his pod, and they were crying at how good the Bucks have been lately. So those kids, those podcasters, those players, they could continue calling us irrelevant and non rivals. But let's remember this: they're the ones that are podcasting about being jealous of where the Buccaneers are today. Um, guys get nice cameras and think they're shit. So, hey, I don't know. Hey, I don't... <laughs> hey, and that's what I love too, right? I've gotten questions and comments about that too. Sir, you're not going to do anything about cameras or audio, sir? No. Why right. the hell would I? I'm not going to sit here and pretend like everything's... This is a real-life pod. Right. I mean, it, the the better we look, the greater. Sure, I love it. You know, I'd love to be able. And one day, down the road, I will get everybody cameras, hopefully, and we could roll with that. But right now, we are where we are. But gentlemen, it's almost holy shit, almost two hours. I think it's Out. almost. Break I think Huncho is gonna call me and cut my. He's gonna have a wish out for me, saying, "Hey, <laughs> I need a I need a pay grade increase, brother. This is two hours now." But um. Still going though, so hey, you know. <laughs> this is this has been fun. This has been a really fun oh, yeah. show. And you can't even tell us the off season just how fun well, everything is. We just had a full a full show. You and you want to know what's how you know it's fun too? When you only need to talk half the show about like the Bucks or even less than just the Bucks, you know that's a great thing. We talked UFL, we've talked Tampa Sports Radio, we've talked in Jadavian Clown, you know, we've talked so many different um, NFL rule changes, just a bunch of stuff. That's how you know it's a great show. And I'd like to call these guys my brothers, not just friends, but you guys. Hey, are... Your brother, speaking of your brother, he you might have to go through a table if we don't get him on his show pretty soon. Yeah, we're gonna get Joe. I keep telling Joey well, to, get join Jano us. to get the table, and we'll we'll put his ass through a table. Just get the table. <laughs> if his ass doesn't at least make the Colts pick in the mock draft, we do. We're getting two tables for Mister Joey of Cleve and me. You know, we're gonna we're gonna tell him he's got to come on, and he's always welcome. I mean, you guys probably see it in the invites. His name's there a lot, but yeah, you know, he he's got he's got to um, keep Cleve in shape. So th- that's what they do over there, and um, I join him as well. But Gene, J Lo, Huncho, fire the damn cannons! Go Bucks! Three, two, one, touchdown! Tampa hey, Bay, oh. Ada, and. It's been a pleasure, fellas. I love tonight, and uh, you guys take care on this Wednesday. Happy 328 tomorrow to everybody. Happy 328. (laughs) And if you guys don't join us for Saturday's show, the happiest of Easter to everybody who celebrates and make sure it's a safe one with your family. There you go. What he said. What he said and what he said. 
whatever. Uh, my my hands pointed the wrong way, but we get the gif, oh damn it. <laughs> before we um, before we get any more out of hand, I think J Lo's uh, degeneration. I think his pants might wiggle off from the uh, DXX over there. So uh, before no we turn X rated here, I want what y'all having, boy. I want what y'all having. I need like. <laughs> No, yeah, you don't want what I'm having. But anyway, <laughs> Bucket tears out of the building. Fire the damn cannons. Gene from Buck, what you heard. Huncho, J-Lo, Tampa Tones here. Cat Stunna and Bucko not able to join us. Another great show. Episode 182 to be exact. We'll, we'll be back for 183rd this weekend. We love you guys. Take care. Happy 328 and happy Easter to all. And once again, congrats to Ronnie, Night Train, Lane, and Tom Krez, Nikki on a hell of a run. Gene Tones, Huncho, and J-Lo out of the building. Thank you Go guys Bucks. so much. Go, Go Bucks. Bucks! Fire the damn cannons. Until we get to two hours, I'm kidding. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Sunday, man. You, I know you're nervous for the Rams, but you got to be a little enthusiastic after being there. Bro, that, that game atmosphere was ridiculous. The energy, the electricity. That place was rocking anyone was there. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh, Super Buck fans were there, too. Uh, Beat Buck. Tampa Tones. We are joined by Lee Goon tonight, uh, host of the Pat and Aaron Show. Of WDAE, uh, Ed Donovan. Ed Donovan, and it sounds like Stunna is bumbling a little bit. Gonna put him on mute for a second until that gets a little clear. But we're joined by. It Pat looks Donovan. like Stunna is hanging out with Cheech and Chong in a car with the windows up or something over there. <laughs> it does look like we got a little. No, my my uh, camera's broke.